This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. This is the one and only place where we bring you the latest in robotics, artificial intelligence, gadgets, and applications. All that you need to know about what's happening in the tech world, in the UAE, and around the world is being brought to you right here on Pulse 95. Yes, indeed. And as Black Friday is coming closer and closer, phishing emails are doubling across the world and in the World Wide Web. Omnia, I actually have gotten two emails, phishing emails. No way. That say that, hey, put your credit card details, you might get 75% off. I mean, that's a very <laughs> that's a very big percentage off. So I'm... I'm so it's attractive. Exactly. And I'm so... Uh, I'm actually surprised that you didn't fall for it because I would have, for oh. sure. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I mean, you're talking about 75% off, but there, there are tips and tricks on how you can notice it. And this is exactly what we're going to be telling you on today's show. But coming up on Future Talk as well, Twitter is making headlines as it becomes jealous from Snapchat. Yes, uh, we've actually seen Twitter kind of uh, hint or give uh, subliminal messages lately that they will launch a stories-like feature. The Twitter community is not excited about that, by no the way. way. They are not excited by, about that. Well, why aren't the tweeps excited? This is, again, another thing that we're going to be tackling on today's show. But coming up on Future Talk as well, would you trust a robot to operate on you? This is definitely a question that might just cause a little bit of fear in the hearts of many people. This is exactly why we're going to be speaking speaking to Dr. Muna Khalfan Sept, who is a head of gynecology at Al Qasimi Women's and Children Hospital. She's going to be telling us about MOHAPS, the Ministry of Health and Prevention's latest achievements. Uh, they have actually performed, I think she has mentioned that they have officially mm-hmm. done over a hundred surgeries by using robots and they have been completely safe to do on patients with a lot of benefits. So we have a very packed show in store for everyone. Make sure you keep Pulse 95 locked and we'll be right back. Daily Digital News. Bits and bytes connect our world. With Black Friday coming up, there's a lot of good deals that you could get online and even in person and in store. Now, for those who don't know what Black Friday is, basically you're getting discounts on basically everything in store. So when something so attractive does come to light, we are looking at phishing emails and hackers taking advantage of this great opportunity, and they are doubling up since it is coming closer and closer. Now, the first half of November did show an 80% increase in phishing campaigns, which uh, I personally have gotten (laughs) two emails that told me I would have 75% off if all I did was enter my credit card details for a future booking of my next purchase. Oh, God. I mean, that is definitely a very attractive offer that they're giving you. But I'm glad that you didn't fall for it because I think I just might have just because of how good of a discount it is. A wise person once told me, Omnia, (laughs) if it's too good to be true, it's not. It's true. not true. <laughs> I definitely agree with you as well. But researchers with security firm, cybersecurity firm Checkpoint have also reported a, a spike in activity when it comes to hacking over the past six weeks. So it's definitely been, it started out even a little bit before November. And this is all, as you've mentioned, Hani, they are hiding under the cover of having mm-hmm. special mm-hmm. offers. Now, this year has definitely been already a record breaker in terms of online shopping as a result of COVID-19. A lot of people have changed their shopping habits instead of shopping in stores they have reverted to shopping online and there have been even more records of people falling into the or becoming the prey of a lot of hackers uh, because of all of the big discounts that everyone looks forward to whether it was amazon's prime day or even the black friday sale cyber monday that will be taking place at the end of this month now i'm the type of person when i get these kind of discounts for amazon prime day black friday i like to use the most out of it and buy things that i wouldn't usually buy at retail price because mm-hmm. i do get good big discounts now in the four weeks from october 8th to, to november 9th the number of weekly special offers that were related to phishing campaigns have doubled globally which did rise to 243 in the beginning of november mm-hmm. which was compared to the start of october which was around 121 so that's a big double jump in uh, in the number of emails that people are getting globally now the first half of november did show an 80 percent increase in phishing campaigns relating to sales or shopping special offers 
with emails th- that did include phrases such as special, offer, sale, and cheap. Now, uh, if you want to see if you've got those phishing emails, I'll give you something to do. Yeah. Go to your Hotmail because Hotmail has a bad filtering when it does come to phishing emails. Mm. Gmail's uh, f- filter is amazing. You'll yes. rarely get an email on Gmail. So go to your Hotmail and a put... A phishing s- email on Gmail. Yes. <laughs> so go to your email on Hotmail and type in special offer sale, one of those keywords, and you're going to see a bunch. Omnia, do you know how many emails I have on my Hotmail account? Around 75,000 emails. Oh, God. And 75,000 of them are phishing? Not phishing emails, but offer offers promotions oh, because okay. that's the email that I started to use back in 2006. Mm. So 14 years of me getting random emails. Yeah. And, the, and the thing is, the problem where this comes in mm. is that a lot of da- seeing a lot of data being sold and when data is being sold, your email is being sold. And uh, it, it's a shame because hackers have access to these emails on the black market. Now, there's actually a story going on right now mm-hmm. with, I think it's called the Muslim Pro app. Yes, the I mu- actually heard of it yesterday and it shocked me. Yes. I mean, uh, for any person who wants to constantly know when is the time of the Adhan, Adhan or the Qibla or even read Quran on the app, Muslim Pro is widely spread. And yesterday I found out that the app actually collects your information yes. and sends it to the U.S. military. It doesn't. Yeah. So what happened was it has Omnia, access to your phone data. It has access to basically everything. So the problem is on not the founder of the app. So obviously this person created the app for yeah. a good intent to give uh, to give uh, Muslims the Muslims around the world way to an easy way to, to know when the, uh, when the prayer is, when the qibla, and uh, where is when you can read the Quran. So the thing was that obviously a big app founder or a big app company mm. bought the app from yeah. this man, and then they sold the data to the U.S. Army. And not only that, Omnia, they're finding out that the U.S. Army isn't the biggest bidder. There are people that are bidding higher than the U.S. Army. And we're talking about the American Army. I know. So that, that, that was a big dog. So looking at the problem here, when it does come to selling data, and you and I, Omnia, have talked a lot on the show, and we've brought experts mm-hmm. who talk about how our data is super sensitive and it is worth gold. Absolutely. And this is exactly why uh, researchers have actually discovered that out of every 826 emails, you will find at least one phishing email that is currently related to November's shopping days. But I know what many of you are wondering, you know, you've told us that we aren't safe right now. Our emails aren't safe. So how can we shop in confidence online? Well, in the same way that shoppers hunt for bargains, hackers will be phishing for victims. And this is exactly why you kind of have to get to learn the language that hackers are going to go ahead and use to basically lure your mind into these offers. So if you were to pay it close attention to the language that is used in the email, you can easily spot these phishing emails. Grammar mistakes. Exactly. (laughs) Big one is grammar grammar mistakes, spelling mistakes, uh, the URL even of the sender that you're getting the email from. Make sure you avoid buying something online using your payment details from a website that does not have double authentication. And actually, a lot of credit cards will not even allow you. Like, I have the Sharjah Islamic Bank credit card and it will not allow me to buy from websites that don't have have that two-factor authentication, authentication or that won't send me the one-time password. Now, now, Omnia, talking about the grammar and the way that these e- emails are formatted, yeah. I do I do remember I got an email that said, hey, you, sir, how are you? You are doing good. We have an offer for you. You pay but five. Yeah, so. English, very best. English, fantastic English very email. best. And at, at the, right off the bat, I knew it was fake. And uh, I was like, spam. Don't, <laughs> I don't even try to get in contact with these people. Don't have any contact with them. Don't open any links. See something fishy. Yes. You delete it and you keep going and even send it to the spam or junk folder. And that's another thing. A lot of people may even, you know, they'll be like, okay, I'm going to. They gonna, want a challenge. Yeah, I'm going to face them and tell them that this is a phishing email. You're not going to spam me. Replying yes. is just as bad as clicking on the link mm. in that website, on now, that email. Exactly. Now, Omnia, let's go to the Twitter world, the Twitter yes. verse, and talk about how Twitter is launching disappearing fleets globally. Now, this is a new update that Twitter has been talking about, and it's been breaking Twitter actually since yesterday. So it will be launched launching tweets that disappear after 24 hours for all users. And let me tell you something, Omnia. Yes. The Twitter community is not happy about it. I mean, that's a shocking one. I'm not a, an avid user of Twitter, but I know you are. And to see Twitter actually getting jealous from Snapchat, getting ch- uh, jealous from Instagram stories, and trying to implement the same using tweets, that's definitely an interesting factor. But Twitter has previously al- announced its plan to create these 24-hour tweets that it's actually calling 
fleets. Mm. I mean, it's it's all rhyming, you know, yes. if, you've, if you haven't noticed. And it's actually been testing this feature in Brazil, Italy, India, and South Korea. Now, many of us tend to feel like tweeting is just uncomfortable. You're doing it in public. Some people won't agree with me, but mm. a lot of people do feel like that. And this is exactly why Twitter decided to create those 24-hour disappearing tweets so that if you change your mind about a certain thought, it won't even be there by the time you uh, or someone else reads it. But at the same time, you could always delete tweets. Now, yeah. fleets will include text, photos, and even videos and will be available on the top of the user's home timelines on Twitter mm. and on the sender's profile. Now, the company did say fleets would be rolled out to all users on iOS and Android in the coming days. So we're looking at this in the coming days. And once I get that feature, Omnia, I will be talking about it because I'm a big Twitter user. But the thing is, Omnia, we have to look at how things play on. Yeah. Now, Facebook stories, I don't believe that they're, they're, they're popping. I'm not very big on Facebook. They're not just like WhatsApp stories yeah. aren't that popular. What, WhatsApp stories aren't popular at but, all. But Insta stories Insta made it. Instagram stories made it because they perfected it. Mm. Now, the thing with Snapchat is Snapchat created it. But always there's a different type of competitor that will perfect it and kind of innovate a bigger and better product. Product when they have that base foundation product. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, Omnia, yeah, Fleet could either break everything, yes, okay, or it's going to be rub, pushed under the rug, and no one is going to use it or talk about it. I, I personally am not excited about it. I think it's going to be a great way for people who don't feel necessarily confident enough or comfortable enough sharing their thoughts and having it be, mm. you know, constantly yes. there on their timeline. Mm. But at the same time, it's also a great feature for you to be able to share texts yes. and videos and pictures that won't. I mean, it, it's kind of like having a digital tattoo. It won't be there forever. I mean, I mean or at least forever for everyone to see. I mean, Twitter has been instigating that they do plan on, on coming out and making it more a little bit interactive, yeah. and they don't want to focus on text. Now, Twitter, you and I talked about it only a couple of months ago, that they did release that voice note feature on the timeline. <laughs> so instead of text, you would have, you could say your voice, but it still wasn't integrated into their direct messages, True. which was more important to a lot of users. So I personally think, Omnia, I think this is not going anywhere. Mm. It's uh, it's it's going to stay the way it is. And uh, not a lot of people will use fleets or they will use it to abuse it. Yes. So let us know your thoughts. Which which opinion do you take? Do you think no one is going to be using fleets? Or do you feel like it might just be a big hit? Our text lines are open for 215 door to Salat or sign into our DMs at Pulse95 Radio. Coming up, we are talking all about robotic surgeries. Robots may sound like they're cutting into our bodies, but do they have doctors backing them up? That's definitely a question we're going to be tackling. So keep Pulse 95 locked. We'll be right back. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Amial Saleh and Henny Balkis. Whenever we hear the term robotic surgery, we tend to imagine that a huge Terminator looking robot is operating on us and that the surgeon is not involved. Now, it's scary enough to have surgery, let alone to think that a big bulky robot is going to be uh, the one operating on you. But this is not the reality. Robots are actually operating on us in endless surgeries. And you may actually have had an, a robot operating on you without even knowing mm -hmm. it, especially if you've had LASIK surgery, LASIK eye surgery then you've definitely had a robot operate on you and the ministry of health and prevention has recently announced the successful performance of three robotic surgeries and we actually have the head of gynecology at al qasimi women's and children hospital dr Muna khalfan sept to tell us more about how those robotic surgeries are actually changing our lives when we compare them to the traditional methods of operating on patients welcome to the show dr Muna. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is my pleasure to be with you today to discuss the experience of Ministry of Health and Prevention about robotic surgery. Uh, as you said, I'm the head of ob So mm -hmm. I will go more to discuss about ob surgery or let's say gyne surgery because we don't do cesarean section by yeah. robot. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the mean of robot? That's what you have explained. Yeah. Mm. You need a skillful surgeon. It is not only a surgeon. Mm. So you are really in a safe hand. That means people who are doing robotic surgery are people who had extensive training for that surgery. Mm. Uh, how it is done? Majority of the people knows about laparoscopy. Mm. It is more or less a form of minimally invasive surgery mm. where you have 
three or four small pores with your tummy. Mm-hmm. And small instruments go through that. Mm-hmm. What is the difference between doing laparoscopy, which has been done for so many years, mm-hmm. and robotic? Mm-hmm. Robotic, the magnification is more. Mm-hmm. This is the real difference which mm-hmm. we start with. And that's definitely something that we've seen. As uh, traditional forms mm-hmm. of surgery, you'd have to do a big incision. Mm-hmm. But with robotic surgery, the incision is much smaller. Yeah. And I want to yes. a- ask, how does the robotic surgical system actually work? How it works? Yes. There is a consular, which is the surgeon mm-hmm. more moderated mm-hmm. with a good and firm hand which really give a freedom for the surgeon to move mm. like moving in reality mm. and the image will be 3d image mm. so you can imagine and it is magnified by 10 times mm. oh wow so you are working with 10 time magnification mm. it is scary sometimes if you think that you are looking to my eye imagine you are seeing it 10 times <laughs> That's great for the mm. surgeon. That means any small bleeding can be seen. Mm-hmm. Any small structure can be seen clearly, which really make you safe. Mm. Absolutely. And that's another uh, question that comes to mind. You know, whenever surgeons uh, start with an operation, a lot of the times it, take the, it takes them some time to find, let's say, the source of the bleed or uh, a certain tumor that they're looking for. So does this cut uh, t- the time of the operation down? performing it by using a robot? Yes, definitely. Mm. The time, you know, it depends on the skill of the surgeon. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people still in the learning curve Mm. because Mm. it started to be used in OB-GYN almost 20 years back. Mm. Mm. And, you know, it was not that popular for several reasons. Mm. First, the machine is expensive, so it is not widely available. Second, it needs training. And not a lot of people got that chance. Fortunately, our team in Obigani Department, Al Qasimi Women and Hospital, uh, Women Al Qasimi Women and Children Hospital, have this great chance. We have a visitor consultant, which is arranged by the visiting consultant office at Ministry of Health and Prevention, mm-hmm. who is known international. And he's well skilled in that, and he's performing all the major surgery robotically mm. now, with a team, local team who are under training. Now, what I know is that with robotic surgery, it's a little bit more steadier. The hand of the uh, the, the arm of the robot will be steadier than the doctor's hand. No, it is the doctor, not the robotic. Yes. Mm. Uh, if I get you clearly, yeah. Okay. If I get your question clearly, yeah. Mm. So it's, it's, it is not worse. It doesn't depend on the robotic. I'll give you the machine. You yes. cannot operate. Mm. Mm. You need to be trained how to use the machine properly. Absolutely. So it is still surgeon dependent. And uh, another question that comes to mind, you know, one of the most popular machines that are currently used in robotic surgeries is the Da Vinci uh, machine. Yes. Uh, can you explain to us a little bit uh, and describe how it looks like? Is it an entire body or the skeleton of a robot or is it just a few arms that are currently operating on patients? Yeah, yeah. Just the arm is connected through like what we described, small mm. four ports. Mm-hmm. The surgeon staying away from the patient but mm. in the same operating room and he is handling the movement of those two hands which is attached to the patient. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it is completely secure, completely under his vision. He can um, deal with anything which might Come go wrong. Now, how, how many numbers of, of robotic surgeries have been conducted in Sharjah and in the UAE so far? In Sharjah, we have maybe more than 150. Wow. Let me speak wow. only about ob Yeah. Because, you know, when it starts, it starts with cardiac surgery. Mm. Mm. So the cardiologist had started this. Mm-hmm. Uh, ob gyni we started like now one and a half years back. Mm. Fortunately, during these one and a half years, we have done more than 100 surgeries. What a great Uh, accomplishment. Sorry? What a great accomplishment. Yes, really. It is a great (laughs) thing. It is achievement. And this is what Ministry of Health is trying to provide. Mm. We are trying to be a pioneer. We are trying to be like the vision of the country to be the first. So that is achievable, alhamdulillah. Absolutely. So 
Coming up on Future Talk, we're going to be discussing some of the benefits that robotic surgeries can have for patients in, ty- in terms of pain management, mm. as well as recovery time. If you have any questions for Dr. Muna, where Th- can they find us? 4215 do text us in or on our Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. We're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back, we're going to dive into robotic surgery. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. The thought of a robot cutting into our bodies or operating on us does definitely sound like a scary one, but little did we know that many of us actually encounter robots most of the time whenever we visit any doctor. Whether it was an eye doctor, whether it was uh, even going to your regular visit to the gynecologist, or even if you are visiting a cardiac doctor. All of them use robots and depend on them even during surgery. And this is exactly why today we're talking about the Ministry of Health and Prevention's greatest accomplishment in successfully completing over 150 robotic surgeries in uh, the gynecology department but also endless uh, surgeries using robot robotics in the cardiac department as well. Joining us today is Head of Gynecology at Al-Qasimi Women's and Children Hospital, Dr. Muna Khalfan Sept, who's been giving us a, a, an actually a good crash course in what robotic surgery is like. Thank you so much for joining us Dr. Muna. The pleasure is all ours. Now, what are the benefits of robotic assisted surgery? Okay. If we want to discuss the benefits, yeah. what are what our patients looking for? Mm. The patient looking for a safe surgery, mm. early recovery, mm-hmm. okay, and less pain post operative. All this achieved through robotic. Mm. Mm-hmm. How? If you are doing the conventional or the traditional surgery, mm. we are opening a minimum of eight to ten centimeter in the abdomen yeah and that big scar will give you pain mm. and that big scar will not allow you to go home before four to five days mm. which mean you are away from your uh, home for a week or so and you will not be able to return to your job before four weeks mm. which oh, make wow. a difference yeah with by robotic you have only four small opening which is easily healed this pain this requirement for painkiller post-op and fortunately within 24 hours you are back home wow. and within a week to two you are back to your work mm. now so now, that's the greatly mm. the advantage of robotic mm. Mm. now uh, is it safer than the traditional surgery yes it is safer mm. yeah. why it is safer mm. fair if I open more, uh, a bigger incision, that means you are, I'm putting you at increased risk of infection. Mm-hmm. And if you have more pain, that means you will be not fully mobilized. Yes. Mean yeah. You will be tied to the bed for a period of time because of pain mainly. Mm-hmm. And that puts the person at a risk of what we call thrombosis, mm-hmm. which can be life-threatening. This is not the case with robotic. With robotic, you are active after a few hours. Mm-hmm which make a difference. So if you compare it to traditional surgery, yes, with confidently, we can say it is safer. Absolutely. And a lot of uh, patients actually uh, don't realize that robotic surgery is more of a norm than they think they than they think it is. And as you've mentioned, with traditional forms of surgery, the incision is larger because you're looking at the doctor being able to see clearly uh, inside the patient's body. But with a robotic surgery, the sur- the surgical robot is basically a surgeon's set of eyes. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, mm. So, what mm. is your question? Is the patient aware of that? Yeah. So, does what should a patient expect yeah. whenever they're heading to do a robotic surgery? Is it any different of a prep mentally and uh, physically than it is when you're doing traditional forms of surgery? You know, for any patient, it is still a major procedure. Yeah. It doesn't put her to be minor procedure, although mm. it is done through a minimal force. Mm. But it is major procedure. Yeah. So first, the patient needs to be fit. Mm. So we do the normal preparation for any surgeon. Mm-hmm. The only thing, the patient can be reassured that you will not stay long in the hospital. Mm. Mm. You will not have more pain. You will recover, inshallah, within a few days. Mm-hmm. And you can be back uh, to your work. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another question. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay, another question comes to mind. What type of surgeries can be done by using robotic surgery, uh, especially in uh, your department? Okay, that's an excellent question. Actually, when it started, you know, it was a new thing. Mm. What extent they can do with robotics? Mm -hmm. So it started only with minor surgery, let's say. Mm. Not a minor web, but let's put it in and complicate it. Mm. Like if we are just simply removing a small uterus. Mm -hmm. or removing an ovarian cyst mm. or doing something what we call uh, female sterilization. Mm. So it starts with this. But when the people gain more experience, more skill as a surgeon in this field, the few different now. Mm. They are doing all the surgery and this is had done it had been done also mm. in our hospital, including malignancy. Mm. That's amazing. I like to see how technology is advancing in the medical sector. Now, do you believe that in the coming years, we're going to see more use of this robotic surgery? Yes, I think it has already started. Mm. I think as UAE, mm. uh, we start this in Ministry of Health, al Qasimi Hospital with two brands, the General Hospital and al Qasimi Women and Children. Mm. Mm. But soon, a lot of private a lot of uh, other emirates uh, gaining this interest and starting on robot. Mm. So I think the future, maybe we will not hear about laparoscopy. Mm. Maybe majority of the gynecology health surgeon will be operating through robot, which mm. is safer and give the patient a better chance of recovery. That sounds like music to my ears. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I, I feel like uh, something of this kind of this um, this parameter is great for, 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 first of all, the patient, the doctor. And I mean, the recovery time is great. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you mentioned doctors because surgeons actually suffer a lot during surgery, especially traditional forms of surgery. They're hunched over mm. their their bodies are also impacted during these surgeries so it's great for patients great for uh, doctors and right here in Sharjah we're very proud that over 150 surgeries have been performed only in the gynecology department let alone when it comes to cardiac surgeries coming up on future talk we're going to be telling you more about it, the benefits of robotic assisted surgeries but also will doctors be replaced by those robotic surgeries mm. if you have any questions for dr muna sept make sure you send them in at 4215 door to salat or sign into our dms at pulse 95 radio take this out take this out Whenever we talk about robots, a lot of us tend to think of this is going to be happening sometime in the future, you know? It's not something that is taking place right now. But when it comes to robotic surgeries, they've actually been taking place for endless years so far. And I'm not sure if you know this, Hani, but the first robotic surgery that was ever done, the test run, was actually done on a grape. A grape? Yeah. Actually, I think I've seen that video. The gra It was being yeah, yeah, sutured. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen that video. I, I think I saw it like two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy to look at the grape being mm. sutured by using those robotic arms. But uh, right here in Sharjah, big accomplishments are happening in the realm of robotic surgeries because... Um, the Ministry of Health and Prevention actually celebrated a huge accomplishment with a total of 150 surgeries done using uh, robotic assisted systems. And this is exactly why we are joined today by Head of Gynecology at Al Qasimi Women's and Children Hospital, Dr. Muna Sabt, who has been telling us a lot about how safe these surgeries are, but also how much benefits they bring to the patient. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Muna. My pleasure. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours. Now, when we talk about robots in the industry, whether it's uh, commercialized or even in the medical field, the number one question people want to ask, will robots replace humans? And now the question of the hour is, will robots replace doctors? I don't think robots will replace doctors mm. because it has been tried. If it is robotically with a surgeon far away, mm. it wasn't that safe. Mm -hmm. But with availability of the surgeon in the same room, okay, he's not attached to the patient's body, mm. but he's in the same room operating safely and know what is going on with his patient or, or her patient, mm -hmm. that makes it more practical. Mm. So I don't think future 
that robot will replace doctors, mm. at least not in the near future. Mm. I think that's definitely bringing comfort to many patients yeah. <laughs> right now, you know, knowing that the, the doctor will still be there. The, 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 the robot is basically just giving them more accuracy, more precision, and for yes. the patient, a much smaller incision. So they can also make sure that they are recovering a lot faster. Now, uh, one question that comes to mind whenever we're talking about using robots in a surgery is how much pressure the robot can apply. So does the surgeon have full control over the pressure of the robotic arm or is there always the risk of the robot maybe damaging some tissues? No, no, no. That's a thing which is not happening. Mm -hmm. There is full control from the mm -hmm. surgeon. Mm -hmm. So it is safe. It is not a robot which might anything happen and it go wrongly. Mm -hmm. It is the surgeon who is monitoring and controlling everything. Now, now Dr. Muna, I want to ask you, does the patient know that a robot will be operating on them? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> yes. The patient signed that consent. But we reassure them that it's a safe procedure. Mm. You know, when we start, actually, even some of the doctors was not aware. Oh. So when she consulted her doctor whom she trusts, can I go for robotics? She told her, no, 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 don't trust robotics. Oh. It trust human only. <laughs> yeah. But now I think it is gaining popularity, especially in the last one and a half year. And majority of the patients coming and asking, what is the benefit of robotics? Mm. They want to know more. Mm. I definitely uh, see why they would do that because I feel like back in the day, a surgeon's main priority was is, there, is the surgery performing what it should be performing and is the patient safe? But now patients are more concerned with the recovery time because of our fa fast paced life. Everyone wants to go back to their regular routine uh, once again. And this actually brings me uh, to yet another question when it comes about when it comes to robotic surgeries. We've talked about whether or not all surgeries could be done by using robotics. But the question is, are all individuals fit to be a part of robotic surgeries, let's say patients who have pre-existing conditions, is it safe for them to also have uh, robotic surgeries done? Pre-existing conditions yeah. mean they are fit for anesthesia or no. Mm. That's the yeah. only thing. So okay. it doesn't impact if they the are surgery. fit to go for operation, mm. whether traditional or robotic, yes, it is safe to go for robotic. Mm -hmm. But your first part of the question is, Everybody mean, do you mean the physician, the surgeon? No, I mean Any patients, doctor? patients wise. Patient. Mm. No, patient, majority of the cases, as we said, mm. can be done robotically. But there is something like we call fibroid uterus, mm. which is like a, some benign lesion in the uterus. Mm. It can grow really big that it cannot be done robotically. Mm. Okay. And that from before we cannot even think about uh, laparoscopy mm. so it will go for conventional mm -hmm. but with the increase in experience mm -hmm. usually the surgeon will give the option we will try robotic if we couldn't manage we will uh, convert it to traditional mm -hmm. which is totally acceptable now Absolutely. and it is safe now so sometimes yeah, yeah? Yeah, now, training the doctor to use this robot, is there any intense training going on or is it quick and easy for a doctor to, 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 to manage or use uh, the robotic arm? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Where the doctor needs to be a doctor who knows everything in my part, the body, right? Yes. Mm. You know, the organs, you know, how to deal with it if he needs to open traditional surgery. So mm. the first training will be on a traditional surgery. Mm. You need to be a good traditional surgeon to move to robotic because oh. I cannot feel safe if somebody come and operate on me while he doesn't know what to do if I bleed and yeah. it cannot be controlled by lab, uh, robotically. Mm -hmm. So they need to have a good skill as traditional surgeon mm. and then they are trained for laparoscopically mm. and this is not easy training. Mm. Uh, we feel what I told you in the start, it mm. is extensive magnification of what we see when we open laboratory. Mm. Ten times so, more magnified. Yeah, it needs time to get oriented with the tactile movement when you are doing it because you are not feeling the mm. thing. Uh, luckily, when you were asking about the future, yeah. in the future, there is some robotic now which you can have the sensation. Yeah. You yeah. can have the tactile movement, which is mm. really good. So it gives the surgeon more of a feel of what it's like yes, to be... more a feeling of about yeah. the tissue. Mm. Absolutely.
Thank you. It's, it's amazing. I mean, it's great to see these technological advancements, especially in the medical field. As we do know, I mean, being in the medical field is very important. And with these technological advancements, is going to ease a lot of things in our lives. Absolutely. And we definitely have to pay tribute for all the doctors and surgeons who are, especially mm. during the COVID-19 pandemic, putting their own lives yeah. on the line to make sure that their patients are safe. Dr. Munasab, thank you so much for joining us today. It was definitely a very insightful conversation that I'm sure a lot of people benefited from. Mm. Thanks a lot. Just I would like to say, please, we are welcoming all of you in Al Qasimi Women and Children Hospital. Just come and say, we would like to know about robotic. I have a problem and can, can it done robotically? Speak up and we are ready to accept whatever you want to know. Thank you so much, doctor. It was a pleasure yeah. having you on the show. Thank you. To all of our listeners, I hope today you got a chance to see exactly what it's like to have a robotic uh, surgery uh, simply by listening to what Dr. Muna had to share with all of us. But Future Talk is coming to an end, but you can catch us again. Future Talk will be returning from 2 to 3 p.m. Same time, same place tomorrow, only here on Pulse. 95. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.